Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Bibles on the Bench. My name is Trevor, and I am here to help you to know that you actually are quite a valuable person, even if you have left the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Now, one thing... See, I used to be a Jehovah's Witness from 1990 to 1997. So I spent seven years going door to door, believing in Jehovah and all the things that he wanted to do. And then uh, one day it, it just became too much, too much pressure, too much um, demands of elders and people and everything else that did not fit in harmony with the Bible. Now, down here on Bibles on the Bench, we have been doing a lot of Bible reviews. You can check out through the back back histories here, yeah, playlists, whatever. We've been doing a lot of views where we take many, many different Bibles and we compare them scripture to scripture with, of course, the JW's New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. Now, I got a new one of these. I actually have somewhere here. Disappeared. <laughs> I have, oh, this was my Bible that I took door to door back in the 90s. And as you can tell, I used it a lot. I actually ripped through the spines and everything. This is how devote I was. I mean, this page here is barely even hanging on. <laughs> okay. And I read this thing so many times. And what actually woke me up to get out of the watchtower was I read this thing cover to cover. Because an elder actually suggested, read your Bible cover to cover. So I did. And ever since then, I have read, like, this Bible cover to cover. And, well, many others. I've read the Bible now five times in my life. Four and a half, actually. Uh, that is, like, the New World Translation, the NIV, and everything else. So, anyway, apart from all this, one thing I know with Jehovah's Witnesses is they have this great belief going on that if you ever leave the truth, then Jehovah will leave you and you will end up being an alcoholic, a drug addict, into prostitution and all these other horrid, horrible, awful things. And this, dear friends, is actually just another lie from Watchtower. So do not believe it. Now, if you are can still a JW and you're here to criticize this video, that's one thing. I don't mind. Uh, if you're an ex-witness and you're you know, you, you're out. I welcome you. And if you are in the truth, but you have doubts and you're watching this video, welcome aboard. <laughs> All right. So this is, uh, a lot of us know this stuff being ex-witnesses or witnesses ourselves and all the rest. So what I want to say to you guys is all the years that you've been in the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society as a Jehovah's Witness, you have had Bible studies, you've given out watchtowers, um, you put together public talks and the whole thing. And yet through this whole time, you don't really realize what you've actually been taught. Because a lot of XJWs believe that, you know, in order to succeed, you need to go to college. And the JWs, they, they don't want you, the elders don't want you to go to college and university because they know that if you're there, and somebody worldly talks to you and they start showing you the real Bible, especially born again Christians. The, the, the Jehovah's Witnesses don't really like born again Christians because born again Christians will come up to you and they'll go, oh, uh, I notice you've, you're a little bit troubled. Why don't we, I'll take your hands and we'll pray to Jesus and we'll say, Jesus, I know this person here is, is looking upset and I just want you to come into our lives now. <laughs> you know, and help this per help us out. Um, you know, this makes <laughs> this makes elders nervous as anything, right? Because somebody is asking the Holy Spirit to come wash <laughs> on a Jehovah's Witness, and that's like whoop, 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 red alert, condition red, <laughs> like whatever, right? So they get you to say, "Oh no, no, don't pray for me. I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses, and and we don't believe in idolatry and all this other stuff, right? Just to get you." you as a witness away from this Christian, right? But the thing is, when you go to university and college and all that, even the college professors will start saying, you know, there is no evolution or there's no creation. It's all evolution, right? And 
it, it brings this challenge up. So the elders to protect you, which really means protect their interests, will tell you not to go to college and university because they don't want you sucked out of the truth and into the world. So then they, they will say stuff like, well, it, it doesn't really say in the Bible that you can't go to college, but keep this in mind. And then they'll crack open the Bible and they'll read something out of Jeremiah where it's like, so-and-so went to this camp that was not part of the nation of Israel. And then the people in there, they all got her to drink and whatever. And they had a hoo-ha with it and all this stuff, right? And then they'll go, see, brother, and that's what could, or sister, that's what could happen to you if you go to university to learn how to be a pipe fitter, you know, or whatever, right? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so like... That's what they try to do, you know? It's it's goofy. Most people in the world, like, they have a belief, you know, be it Christian, Jewish, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, whatever. They have beliefs. Not everybody out there is evil in Satan's control, ready to get you and pounce on you like this deadly tiger and oh, oh, oh. you know, none of that stuff, eh? Most people are you know, somewhere between the conservative, liberal aspect of it, but they don't really want to harm anybody. They might want to get their points across. They might get mad when, you know, like somebody that's liberal and believes a certain way, and then a conservative comes along and they say something different or vice versa, and both sides get mad at each other. But it's not like this big teardown where, oh, you know, Armageddon, oh, you know, and all this stuff like the Watchtower wants you to believe. Um, so anyway... <laughs> You're pretty safe there. Most people in the world are not alcoholics, drug fiends, prostitutes, running around crazy trying to stab you or whatever, you know, all this. Woo! There are people out there, but you really don't need to be with those types of people. You don't need to go out there and find those people. If you suspect somebody is like that and you don't like it, just be like, well, it was great having a friendship with you, but I'm going to, you know, I got some other commitment or, or, you know, never phone them back or something, you know, whatever, right? But... Most of the people are not like that. So anyway, we're getting back to this concept of the Watchtower wants to set you up for failure. So if you leave the truth, you're supposed to like cave into failure, right? Because Satan really is failure. All right. If you want to boil it down that way. So, but the thing is, all throughout this time, the Watchtower has taught you about things. Now, one of the things that they teach you about is how money is evil. You know, it's not the root of all evil, right? As the scripture says, but it is evil in some way or shape or form. So I sat down here and on this piece of paper, I thought up 13, <laughs> what a number, 13 things of how Jehovah's Witnesses as elders and everything have as a concept of money, which we will find is not really Christian, but... So, number one, you should not pursue higher education to help you get a better job. That's always the number one thing with the witnesses, uh, the elders. Uh, number two, if you have a job, you shouldn't work overtime. You must examine if your hours takes you away from meeting times, field service, assemblies, etc. And if so, you must fight your boss's schedule to make it match Jehovah's or look for other work. We know this is true. We know many brothers, like if they have to work overtime, the next meeting, the elder comes up, you know, big hand on the shoulder. Well, brother Trevor, we all missed you at last week's meeting. Is there any particular reason why you couldn't make it? And you say, I was sick. You know, when you really want to say, well, I had to work overtime with my boss. We're working on this really big project. And if we actually fill this project and get it done on time, we're all going to get big, huge raises because whoever is funding this project, okay, is going to dump down like $42 million. All right. So, uh, sorry, I had to put Jehovah second because I have a wife and family. But, you know, if I have a little bit of money, I could actually book more time off and go to the, in the service because I'll have more money for the cup of coffee and the donut at the end, right? Uh, but if you say that to the elders, they'll go, well, brother... Let us turn in the Bible to scripture number one out there about how money is evil and it's corrupting. And, and Jehovah hates it when somebody just pursues money 
even if it's for a noble cause, you know, and you get this big bucket of guilt dumped on you, so you're like, <laughs> you know, and you can't get out of it. But does Jehovah really feel like, yeah, you know, he's the jealous God, whatever, right? Like, no, no, he doesn't. Because we know in the same token that if that elder was in the same position, you wouldn't see him that, <laughs> that Sunday meeting or whatever, you know, whatever, right? Okay, but anyway, that's their 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 thumb squash on your head. Okay, so number three, if you pioneer, you must find a part-time job or even job split a job with another pioneer so that both of you can put in your hours for Jehovah. Money is secondary, Jehovah is primary, right? Uh, number four, the ideal job is one that can balance JW time with work time. Therefore, most JWs will become contractors or self-employed in menial jobs such as window cleaners, house cleaners, janitors, construction workers, carpet layers, yada, 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 glass cleaners, window cleaners. Oh, I have that. Um, you know, because uh, you, can, you can clean windows after field service. You can go and be a janitor at midnight. Uh, like, that is your thinking that you're dealing with with JWs and money. Uh, number five, despite the view that the regular JW must work menial jobs at reduced hours, it seems that elders can hold higher-end jobs, even being large business owners, CEOs, upper-class draftsmen, and other educated high-end positions. For example, I knew an elder back in the 90s that was an architect. Now, architects, big money, and architects work overtime hours and everything so that they can build buildings because they need to make sure that everything is up to code everything is safe elevator shafts are the right dimensions for the elevator car that's going to fit in them uh, skyscrapers all that stuff that's what that elder was doing and uh you know you know go and read the old testament about jehovah and builders and stuff like that when you're looking at tower of babel and ask me if jehovah loves architects okay <laughs> you know not not saying that he doesn't, just saying, you know, you know, right? <laughs> but yet, that elder can have that high-end training because, oh, well, you know, he had that training when he wasn't a witness or some, you know, they make something up. Do we know for sure? Like, do we have a time machine and we follow that elder's life and we're like, oh, ho, you, you, you went to school right out of university and then three years later you were baptized as a witness when someone came knocking to your door the year before we can't we don't we just go oh okay yeah sure brother elder you're honest we believe you uh, you know is he honest you don't know does he have a criminal record you don't know <laughs> you know you can't ask him to go take one either <laughs> so there you are right i joke but this is a sad reality Number six, if someone who went to higher education and who holds a good job joins the JWs and the organization can use that, oh, and joins the JWs and the organization can use that person's skill or money in the form of donations, that person can keep their job. So there, there's your answer to that elder being the architect. Otherwise, they must conform to the same view of reduced time for more Jehovah time, like everybody else. Number seven, you are viewed as a hero if you quit your job and pioneer. Yeah, if you quit your job and deny education and you're 16 or whatever and you devote yourself to be a pioneer, you are the congregation hero! And yet, you have no job, you have... Well, you do have skills, okay? We, we were getting into that. But you don't have any trade or anything to go work at. Unless it's a janitor or whatever, right? Okay, but anyway. Number eight. It is better to work with JWs than to work with worldly people who will lead you away from the organization. Bad associations spoil useful habits. Remember that? Yeah. How many of you got grilled with that? Anyway. Number nine, your career, your job, and your income will all end at Armageddon. Therefore, there is no need, no need to pursue riches for all things will end at any moment. And Jehovah will provide somehow. If you believe, <laughs> believe.
Creed? <laughs> Whatever. Thinking of a South Park episode there. Okay, anyway. Um, number 10. JWs don't want to be materialistic. Materialistic in their financial pursuits. But they all feel like Jehovah will reward them with their pick of mansions to live in after Armageddon. Oh, yes. I remember back in the 90s. Because where we used to uh, go door to door was a very rich area in where I was from. <laughs> and there were like million dollar mansions everywhere in the, in this area. And we're talking like blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks, you know, a neighborhood of the wealthy. Okay. So we used to go door to door. Hello, sir. Would you like, <laughs> hello, Mr. Millionaire person. Would you like to have a watchtower and join our culty religion where we don't believe in money? But don't worry, you can keep your millions as long as you donate a whole ton of it to the Watchtower. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, but anyway. So, when, the, of course, when the householder went, <laughs> no, not interested. <laughs> right? We would walk down the street and go, well, at Armageddon, I'm walking here. At Armageddon, I'm going to have that house when Jehovah destroys that wicked householder who believes in, you know, the Catholic Church or whatever the guy believes in. Right? And we walk away and we go, hmm, I hope the Cadillac will still be there too. You know, like, you know, and this is how we thought as witnesses and how they continue to think. Armageddon will come and I'll have that million dollar mansion because then money won't matter. It'll just be one big house for me. <laughs> All right, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, number 11. Your reward for working for Watchtower will be repaid at some unknown future. Some unknown future time, like after you die of old age. Or at Armageddon, which is just around the corner. Or never, if you are disfellowshipped and Armageddon comes. There's your, you know, three choices, right? Um, sometime in the future, you will have your reward. Like if you're faithful to the end, brother or sister, you know, and uh, you're faithful to the end and you pass away, then one day when Jehovah's like, hey, I sh should make, make do on my promise here, you know, then you are raised from the dead into paradise earth where you're rewarded in full for your good behavior, you know, um, or at Armageddon. So it's like, you are faithful to the end. And then Jehovah's like, okay, it's time for Armageddon. Now, whoo, there it is on the earth. You know, Satan's being thrown into the pit bound with chains for a thousand years and all. Now who's sitting around here? Oh, look, Trevor's sitting there. Hey, how have you been? Oh, you've been doing good. Okay. Welcome to paradise. Da -da 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 -da. Now behind this curtain right here, you have your choice of mansions and Cadillacs that we're left behind by sinners. Da, 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 you know, <laughs> whatever, right? Or the third choice. Yeah, I, I was working so hard for Jehovah, but you know what? I don't really believe it anymore. And uh, oh my God, it's Armageddon! Ah! <laughs> Done. All that work, all that generation gone, totally because faith without works is garbage <laughs> whatever so there you go which again it's not biblical it's not scriptural jesus died for all our sins so believe in jesus and you're doing fine and there's no requirement of going out in service and all this stuff it's just so they could sell quote unquote sell more watchtowers let's face facts okay anyway number 12 this is a good one jehovah's witnesses and money have no savings account or pensions for later years in your life. Do not plan ahead because Armageddon's coming. It's just around the corner. It was going to be here in 1914. It was going to be here in 75 and 25, 1860, whatever, 1889, I think it was. Um, uh, 2000, you know, but we didn't say that. We didn't say it because we, we learned the, the lesson after 75. But, you know, it was around that time, right? It was It was kind of leading up. It was sort of like... Hmm, we're into a new age now. Hmm, hmm. Oh, and then, uh, of course, the generation that was supposed to see the end, um, they all died. So uh, <clears throat> we had to, uh, to, to extend the generation boundaries and meaning, you know. Okay, right? Right? All right. So all these XJW, like especially the guys in 1925 and 1975, if you look it up, right? They were, they knew Armageddon was right around the corner. It was coming. 
No doubt about it. Watchtower said, you know, all that jazz. And they went and they sold their houses, their cars, everything. They were they they had crummy little jobs, you know, so they could just get groceries. They stockpiled food, all this ooh, loopy stuff. And then the redemption never happened. Armageddon never came. 1975 came and went. We're now in 2020. And a lot of these people left the truth. And then Watchtower has the audacity to come out and say, oh, we never printed anything about about that. It was just all in their minds. They, you know, they, they were so encouraged that Armageddon was coming, right? And yet they totally deny that they had a <laughs> public discourse at a stadium at one of the conventions saying, stay alive for 75, you know? Right? <laughs> uh, so they all, so all those brothers and sisters and everything, they sold everything they had because they were so sold on 1975 being the miraculous golden age. Oh, <laughs> running out of time. That, that they did that. And so they were left with nothing. And this is still the same mindset. Don't have any savings. Go out there. Jehovah will provide for you. And, you know, <laughs> if something bad happens to you, um, well, just pray to Jehovah and good luck, sucker. <laughs> anyway, so that's what they think. And so finally, number 13, love of money is the root of all evil. Therefore, don't pursue money unless you are an elder or you make a hefty donation, basically. So where do they get this concept that money is the root of all evil? Well, we can discuss that in the next video. Thanks for watching Bibles on the Bench, and we'll see you next week.